when you will go out to war against your enemies, and Hashem your God will deliver him into your hand, and you will capture its people as captives. The verses continue to go on and describe what happens when you find this beautiful woman and you decide you want to take her home to be your wife. She's called an Ashes Yafat Tawar. But the Hebrew in the first verse goes like this. When you go out to war, we're going to Hashem Elokecha Biadecha. Unatano, and Hashem will place him. We just got done saying you have enemies, and yet Hashem will take one of your enemies and place him into your hand. Vishavita Shivyo, and you will take captive one of the captives. So we talked about this Ashes Yafat Tawar, this beautiful woman who the man has this great desire for. As we know in more, the adrenaline gets pumping The uh, after seeing so much violence and blood and having weapons of war in your hand. Many nations, when they go out to battle, have been accused of, and rightfully so, of murder and pillaging and raping. That's one thing that the Jewish nation has never been accused of, of raping, most likely because of this injunction, this, this command. When you go out to war, you're not allowed to rape, but you are allowed to take the captives home to be your wife. And there's a whole scheme. The truth is, it's not preferable. The scheme is that you is that Hashem set it up that you will not desire her in the end. How is that? Because you shave her head, you allow her nails to grow long, okay? You um, change her beautiful garments into uh, these sackcloth type garments very unattractive and she sits there and she weeps over the loss of her own parents who may have been killed in battle but she's going through a process of conversion over the next 30 days she will be your wife if you decide if you still desire her in the end but the scheme is set up that you will not want to desire her in the end and you come to actually hate her Hashem has set it up that we know that the Yitzhara this evil inclination is what you're actually battling against. As it says, Ayvecha, plural, your enemies. And then Hashem will place him. First, the whole thing is a scheme in order to place him into your hand. We say into your hand, we mean into your control. And therefore, the setup, the scheme, is to allow your Yetzirahara to diminish, to constantly go down, and to get rid of it, where you're not interested in taking her anymore as your wife. And how does it begin? If we look in Ecclesiastes, that's Kohelis, chapter 7, verse 2, what do we know about a house of mourning? A house of mourning can be quite depressing, but it's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. And why is that? For that is the end of all man. How can we understand going, that going to a house of mourning is better? Because it brings the stark reality that we are mortal and that we will face Judgment Day. And that is a reason for the Yitzhahara to get quite scared and want to leave. Because that's the last thing he's interested in, is Judgment Day. And as the rest of the verse says, for that is the end of all man, and the living should take it to heart. So when you really take it to heart, and you're in this environment where this woman is crying the whole day long in your living room, so your, your Yetzirahara is going to really die out because it's going to be in a constant, it's like sitting in a house of mourning 24 hours, 7 days a week. And then we have this other idea, we come to wars in general. There's two types of wars. There's the external war that you fight on a battlefield, and then there's this internal war that one fights within his own consciousness and his own heart. The one you fight in your heart, that's with your Yetzirah, that's with your evil inclination. The one you fight outside, that's with your enemy, your physical enemy. So how does it work? They act the opposite ways. As we know, everything is in the hands of heaven except for the fear of heaven. So how does it all begin? You must, in order to win the war against your external enemy, Chazal, Hashem, the Torah is all teaching us the same lesson. Now how does this begin? It begins down here. Let's talk about the other way first. How does an external war begin? It all begins in heaven. If we look in Judge in uh, Shoftim, that's Judges chapter 5, verse 20. From heaven they fought. The very stars from their orbits did battle with Sisera. 
all the physical war, wars begin in heaven and are fought through the spiritual worlds first, the celestial beings, the administering angels, and the war will then be determined, and then we play it out here. We finish it off. When it comes to fighting the internal battle, there's no way that we can overcome it ourselves, but we have to begin. It's us to take the initiative. This is what it means that, it, that, we, that Hashem will deliver him first into our hands. So we begin, as we mentioned, everything is in the hand of heaven except for the fear of heaven. We take the initiative first. We do battle with our Yetzahara. And in the end, Hashem will finish it off. He will help us. There's no way that we could do this without God's help. I would like to wish you all Shabbat Shalom and the upcoming Shana Tova, New Year's, getting through the Yom Hadin, the Judgment Day. And this hopefully will give you some insight in how to finish off your own tshuva. If you haven't started, now's the time. Welcome to the club.